This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, April the 11th, 2019. It's the feast day of the bishop and martyr St. Stanislaus. He was bishop of Krakow in the 11th century, and he was one of the very earliest, but not the first, native Polish bishops. He was also a ducal advisor and did the legwork to get papal legates to the Polish court. He was also instrumental in getting Benedictine monasticism in Poland. Things went south when King Boleslaw the Bold came to the throne. There were some wonderful legends associated with their conflict. In one case regarding a piece of property, the bishop is said to have raised the dead just so that he could testify in court in favor of the diocese against the crown. Their conflict included everything from land disputes to the king's immoral indiscretions to the bishop criticizing the king's policies to ultimately Stanislaus excommunicating the king and forbidding the canons of the cathedral to pray in such a way that the king could hear even if he was in the building. It was undoubtedly more serious than petty, but nowadays it seems almost comical. After the king ordered the execution of the bishop, No one had the guts to do it, and so the king himself went up to Stanislaus while he was offering Mass, standing at the altar, and struck him down. Ultimately, this caused such outrage that the king had to flee his throne, and he died in self-imposed exile in Hungary. Today in 1961, the trial of Adolf Eichmann began. Eichmann was an unremarkable young man who had risen to middle management in the Nazi army. He was handed a logistics job by Reinhard Heydrich to go to Hungary and arrange for the mass deportation of Jews, first to ghettos and ultimately to extermination camps. In all, Eichmann oversaw the systematic murder of about 5 million Hungarian Jews most of them at the Auschwitz-Birkenau gas chambers. Eichmann was first captured by U.S. soldiers around the time of the liberation of the camps, but he managed to escape custody. He evaded recapture and made his way to Argentina, where he lived as Ricardo Clement, a name implying mercy from guilt, for a further ten or so years until the Israeli Mossad found him and arrested him. He was tried before a special tribunal in Jerusalem, and the proceedings were televised and observed worldwide. As his defense, Eichmann claimed he was only following orders, and he had no authority whatsoever to change the plans for the Holocaust. He was just the logistics man. The trial ran just over four months, and the judges deliberated a further four months, finding Eichmann guilty on 15 counts of crimes against humanity, war crimes, crimes against the Jewish people, and membership in a criminal organization. The judges found him not guilty of personally murdering anyone by his own hands. But like the Nuremberg trials, Eichmann's trial was about more than the man and his particular crimes. Today in 1970, astronauts Jem Lovell, Jack Swaggart, and Fred Fredo Hayes suited up and entered the command module for the Apollo 13 spaceflight under Flight Commanders Gene Krantz, Glenn Lunny, Milt Winder, and Jerry Griffin. About 56 hours into the flight, a faulty wire caused an explosion in an oxygen tank, and that changed history. The crew and a huge ground team worked around the clock for the following three days to get the men home safely. Apollo 13 didn't get to the moon, and none of those astronauts ever went to space again. They spent five days, 22 hours, and 54 minutes on board Apollo 13. The story was dramatized in 1974 and 1978, but the 1995 film, directed by Ron Howard and starring Tom Hanks and Ed Harris, is the definitive telling. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.